Hey guys, I always tell my students, maths is about making complicated things simple. It's about simplifying. It's about making your life easier and more understanding. Algebra is a topic that does just that. It's a topic that introduces pronumerals. What are pronumerals? They are letters or symbols. And they take the position, they take the place of numbers. Now, the whole world revolves around using algebra. All your formulas, all the tech gadgets that you have, your iPhones, your iPads, they all work because they have been programmed using formulas. Now, for us, we're not going to go into too much detail. However, we're going to go and explain to you how algebra works. If you understand the basics of algebra, you're going to notice the rest of your algebra life throughout high school is going to be very easy. I've assessed too many students and in year 9 and 10 they come and I notice their problem is that is not the year 9 nor the year 10 work nor the year 11 work. It's actually the basics of not understanding algebra. Today I'm going to spend some time going through a lot of the examples just so you can understand algebra very well. Algebra is used to simplify mathematical problems. We like to make things simple. You'll notice a lot in maths where the question says simplify or write your answers in simplified form. So it's very important we understand algebra very well. You're going to notice it is easy. Once you get the hang of it, you'll become very fast. Let's go through some of the rules. In algebra, when we have a multiplication, it's basically invisible. So looking at these examples here in these diagrams, m times n, it is the same as mn. So all we do is get rid of the multiplication. m times n meaning mn. We also have 4 times b. Now b is a number, but we don't know what it is. So 4 times b is exactly the same as 4b. So we don't write it as 4 times b, we write it as 4b. We're going to do more examples, but now just go through the theory. Division, when we have an example of g divided by 7, we write it in fraction form. So we write g over 7. g divided by 7, g over 7. And we have y divided by t, another example. We write it as y over t. And one of the last rules we're going to go through is that b times b equals b squared, or a times a equals a squared. It's like saying 8 times 8, 8, squ 8 squared. So the same thing in algebra, we follow the same rules. Now that we've understood the basics, this is the theory, let's start by applying it to some examples and you'll see it is very easy. Looking at this example here, where it says 4 times y. So we said the rules are, we get rid of the multiplication sign. 4 times y in algebra, we just write it in simple form, 4y. Four, 4 times y, 4y. That's it. All we've done is just get rid of the multiplication sign. 6 times a. How do we write it? Simple rule. We just get rid of the multiplication sign. 6 times a is the same as 6a. So whenever you see 6a, you know straight away it means 6 times a. a times b. What do we do? The multiplication sign. See you later. a times b. a, b. We've written it in a simple form. a, b is a times b, but we write it in simpler form. The multiplication sign, we say bye bye. t times s. t times s. T, S, the multiplication sign, once again, gone. Looking here, we have A times C times C. Now, when we are writing this one, again, we are going to get rid of the multiplication signs. A times C times C is AC squared. Why? a times c is ac, c times c is c squared. Instead of writing acc, again in maths we like to make things simple. So we write it as ac squared, meaning 
a times c times c again because c squared means c times c. See if you can do this one. g times y times g. What do you think is going to be? Think about it. g times y times g. We know we can write it as g y g. However, in math we like to make it simpler. So we write it as g squared y because g times g times y. So g squared y, which really means g times g times y or g times y times g. The order doesn't matter. It's like 4 times 3 or 3 times 4. They both have the same answer of 12. So the order in, mul in multiplication doesn't really matter at all. 5 times 5 is 5 squared. g times g is g squared. So just to bring the picture more, all we're doing, we're following the same rules of normal mathematics. They behave the same way. But we are using letters or what we know as pro numerals. This example here, 3 times y times b. We always write the numerals first, the numbers first. And 3 times y times b, we can write it as 3yb. Or we can even write it as 3by. Again, the order does not matter. It's best to write it in alphabetical format. 3by or 3yb is still correct, but it's always best to write it in alphabetical order. 3 times y times b is 3yb. We get rid of the multiplication sign. We can write it like that. Or we can write it like that. They're both correct. Here, 5 times a times 4. We notice here we have numerals, we have numbers. And we know 5 times 4 is what? It's 20. So 20 a. 5 times 4, 20. 20 times a, 20 a. Here, we have 6 times brackets y plus t, close the brackets. So basically, this question is saying that 6 is multiplied by everything inside the brackets. Everything inside the brackets. All we need to do is simply take off, get rid of the multiplication sign. That's it. The times is gone. 6 brackets y plus t brackets. We know there is a little times here, but we don't write it, but we know it's there. It's invisible. 6 brackets, y plus t, close bracket. We've wrote, we have written it in a very simple and straightforward format. So let's go through one more time. 4 times y, 4y. We've just said to the multiplication, bye bye. 6 times a, 6a. 6a is exactly the same as 6 times a. A times B, AB. T times S, TS. A times C times C, AC squared. And we said C squared is the same as writing it as C times C. G times Y times G. G squared, G times G, times Y, G squared, Y. And 3 times Y times B. Again, the multiplication signs are gone. 3yb, we know it means 3 times y times b, or we can write it 3 times b times y. Both are correct. Whatever way you choose is fine. 5 times a times 4, we know there are numbers multiplied. 5 times 4 is 20, 20 a. And lastly, 6 times everything in the brackets, we just get rid of the multiplication sign. 6 brackets, y plus 2 plus t. Close the brackets. So we know it means 6 times everything in the brackets. So whenever you see that, you know straight away it means 6 times everything inside the brackets. Now, let's do some more examples to get the picture much more clearer. Some more examples now, and you're going to see how easy it is. 7 divided by y. We learned that 
The division means fraction. So 7 divided by y means 7 over y. The division becomes a fraction bar. The 7 is first, so it becomes on the numerator and the y is on and becomes the denominator. 7 over y. This one here, y divided by 7. So y divided by 7, the division is fraction bar. y is our numerator, it's on top, and the 7 down the bottom as the denominator. Very important to know that rule. I've seen students mix them up. Very important. What comes first is the numerator. What comes second goes as the denominator. A, A times B times C. We learned that the multiplication, we say goodbye, so the multiplication goes. A times B times C means A, B, C. It's as simple as that. The multiplication just goes. H times H. We said like 8 times 8 is 8 squared. 5 times 5, 5 squared. In algebra, the pronumals follow and behave in the same way. H times H. What do you think? H squared. So H times H is H squared. In algebra, we always like to simplify and make things simple. 4 times D times D. 4 is our numeral. We write it first. And D times D is D squared. 4 D squared is our simplified answer for 4 times D times D. B times 6 times b. Again, we always write the numerals first. 6 comes first. b times b is b squared. 6b squared is our answer for b times 6 times b. Here we have 5 divided by everything in the bracket, which is a times 2 in the brackets there. 5 comes first. It is our numerator. Division is our fraction bar. A times 2 is our denominator. 5 divided by everything, which is A times 2 in this case. So, as shown, you'll notice that if we follow the rules, it is simple. We always need to simplify. Algebra is about simplifying things. In mathematics, we don't like to complicate things. We like to make them as simple as possible. So here, you've noticed that if you follow the rules, the rules of algebra, if you apply them from now all throughout high school, you're going to find that algebra is smooth and very easy. Remember, later on in different years, you're going to apply these rules and you need to know them back to front for you to find the rest of high school algebra easy. So make sure you master these right now.